You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. And on today's episode of the podcast, we are reviewing the ICC World Test Championship final the 2023 between Australia and India from the Oval. And uh, it was a very interesting game of cricket. We saw some great performances and Australia uh, came out as the winners at the end of the day. So we're going to be talking about the final and how both teams went about their business in the final and how they performed with both bat and ball. And we'll be discussing that in this uh, episode today of the podcast. But first of all, let's have a look at the match summary from this ICC World Test Championship final for 2023 between Australia and India. And Australia batted first and made 469 in their first innings. Travis Head top scored with 163. Mohamed Siraj took four wickets for India. India were bowled out for 296 in their first innings. Ajinka Rahani top scored with 89. And Pat Cummins took three wickets for Australia. Australia, in their second innings, finished on eight for 270 declared. Alex Carey top scored with 66 not out. And Ravinder Jadeja took three wickets for India. India needed 444 runs to win. They finished on 200 and 34 all out in their second innings. Virat Kohli top scored with 49. And Nathan Lyon took four wickets for Australia. Australia won by 209 runs. And Travis Head was named player of the match in the World Test Championship final after his superb 163 in the first innings, which pretty much set up this test match for Australia. So that's the match summary. That's how the match panned out from start to finish. And now let's talk about the key moments and key factors from this final. And and what were the key moments and key factors from this ICC World Test Championship final for 2023 between Australia and India? The key moments and key factors that decided this match in favour of Australia. and, um, And what were the key moments and key factors that really decided where this test match was going? And first of all, it was the Travis Head and Steve Smith partnership. 285 for the fourth wicket was the key moment for Australia. That partnership enabled Australia to post 469 in the first innings, which was a match-winning total after losing the toss and being sent in to to bat first um, on day one. The partnership between Ajinka Rahani and Shadol Thakur of 109 for the seventh wicket helped India to post 296 in their first innings, recovering from... 5 for 151 at stumps on day 2. That reduced Australia's lead to 173 runs, giving some in, uh, giving some hope to India in terms of trying to bowl Australia out for a low score and trying to chase a low target if they can. Um, but the partnership between Alex Carey and Mitchell Stark of 93 for the 7th wicket in Australia's second innings was a key partnership to ensure Australia reached a lead of 400 runs and set India 444 to win. And that was a very key partnership for Australia. Australia were tottering in their second innings. They they lost a few wickets. Alex Carey stood up when needed. And um, Mitchell Stark batted well with him. And and that partnership of 93 for the seventh wicket ensured Australia uh, were able to set a target of 400 runs for India to chase down in the last innings. And uh, last but not least, the the key moment that really decided how day five was going to pan out and that was Scott Boland's over early on day five. Decided how day five would pan out. As I mentioned, he removed Virat Kohli and Ravinder Jadeja. And that pretty much kicked off the Indian batting collapse, which they lost seven wickets for 55 runs in the first session to be bowled out before lunch on day five. Um, all out for 234 and Australia winning by 209 runs and the World Test Championship final. So... Those were the key moments and key factors from this ICC World Test Championship final for 2023 between Australia and India from the over that pretty much decided how this game uh, went in favour 
of Australia. So, let's talk about how both Australia and India performed in this uh, World Test Championship final for 2023 at the Oval with both bat and ball, and talk about both teams' performances and how they went about their business in this final. Let's start off with Australia, the winners of the World Test Championship final. Let's start off with them and talk about their performance in this game. Um, let's talk about Australia's batters and their performance in this World Test Championship final, first of all. So we'll start with their batters. Uh, Warner, 43-1. and uh, Kawaja, 0-13. and Labashane, 26-41. Smith, 121-34. Uh, Head 163 and 18, Green 6 and 25, Carey 48 and 66 not out. That's how the Australian batters performed in this World Test Championship final with the bat. And let's talk about how Australia went about their batting in both innings. We'll start with the first innings, and, and they lost the toss and were sent in under grey, gloomy skies at the Oval. Very bowler friendly conditions. It was going to be tough work in the first hour or so of play. And Australia were able to get through the first session on day one, only losing two wickets. Warner and Labuschagne added 69 for the second wicket. Uh, found themselves at three for 76 very quickly inside 24.1 overs. But the Smith and Head partnership of 285 for the fourth wicket propelled Australia to 469. And uh, both of them scoring big centuries. Head 163, um, Smith 121. And um, both... Travis Head and Steve Smith were dismissed early on day two. And then Australia found themselves at six for 387 and probably going to get bowled out for maybe a score of over 400. Um, they would have liked a more, more runs than that. So Alex Carey came in, batted with the tail, and produced a very good innings of 48. And he he was the key for Australia uh, to, to help Australia reach that score of 469. And he had a very good 50-run partnership, 51 for the 8th wicket with Pat Cummins, the skipper, um, to get Australia to that turtle. So that's how Australia went about their business in the first innings. The second innings, after bowling India out for 296, Australia had a lead of 173 runs. And it was very crucial for Australia to bat well in the second innings. And usually when you bat in the second innings of a test match and you've got a first innings lead, it's, it's so vital that you string together partnerships, you don't lose too many wickets, and you ensure that the lead uh, grows steadily um, throughout the innings. Um, Australia were uh, 4 for 123 at stumps on day 3. They lost early wickets and, and were struggling to reach a lead of over 400. They lost 4 wickets very early. Um, you know, both Smith and Head were gone. The Centurions from the first innings, the second innings, they were gone cheaply. Um, so pressure on Australia to, to get a lead that was going to be troubling for India to chase down um, in the last innings of, of this test. Um, but then Alex Carey and Mitchell Stark came to the rescue and they had a partnership of 93 for the seventh wicket, which enabled Australia to get that lead of 400, set India 444 to win, uh, which in the end India couldn't chase down and they were bowled out for, for 230 odd. Um, and then Australia declared at 8 for 270, and as I mentioned, set India 444 to win. That partnership between Kerry and Stark was vitally important, and it was good to see um, Alex Kerry get some support from uh, Mitchell Stark there, who batted well for his 41, which ensured Australia were able to get that lead of 400. So that's how Australia went about things with the bat across the two innings of this Test match. Um, I, I thought Australia's batting in this test match wasn't a dominant performance. Um, there were signs of rust. There were signs of, of players who lacked cricket in terms of playing cricket before this final. Um, the Australian team haven't played much cricket leading into this final, obviously. Same with India, of course, in terms of test cricket. So the batting was a little bit rusty. We saw that. We sort of expected the, the batting to be rusty. And we certainly saw that with some batters. But uh, Steve Smith, Travis Head, what can you say about them? Their partnership, their centuries, pretty much set up Australia in the first innings. Um, in a precarious position, Australia, three down for 70-odd. In those conditions, they came together. Their partnership was key. It was crucial. 
Um, they took the game away from India. And Travis Head, that's what he does. He takes the game away from opposition. And um, takes the game away from the opposition. And that's what he did to India. Um, 163 in a World Test Championship final is a, a fantastic achievement. And, and no wonder he was the player of the match. Um, he looked good. Um, you know, scoring runs in England ahead of what's going to be a very big, important Ashes series for him and also for Australia would definitely boost his confidence going forward. Steve Smith, what can you say about him? Um, he's ominous, isn't he? He's an ominous touch. Um, so England will be very careful about how Steve Smith will go about his business in this Ashes series. Um, he looked really good. He didn't create an opportunity for India. India bowled poorly to him at times. He was able to capitalise on those poor deliveries. Uh, same with Travis Head as well in the partnership. Uh, Steve Smith, another century in England. 31 test centuries in his career now. Um, he loves batting at the Oval. And it was just a, a wonderful innings to watch. And an and important innings for him going forward for the Ashes which are to come. But also... Um, an important innings in this final as well for Australia to set them up in this match. So I thought Travis Head, Steve Smith, by far two of the best Australian batters in this uh, test match. Uh, both of them scoring centuries, of course, whereas the others looked a little bit rusty, showing signs of rust, and will be disappointed with how they performed in this test match. Um, uh, and also, I uh, let's talk about Alex Carey. Alex Carey, I thought he batted extremely well, and I and I thought he kept wicket very well as well in this Test match. Alex Carey, forty-eight and sixty-six, not out. His two innings were very important for Australia. Certainly in the first innings, where the tail enders uh, didn't really produce much with the bat. Um, Stark only scored five. Cummins nine. Same with Lyon nine, and Scott Boland one not out. So really, it was up to Alex Carey. Um, who put on a good partnership with uh, Pat Cummins of 51, and that was for the um, the eighth wicket. And um, his innings in the first innings was very important to ensure that Australia got to 469 in the end. Uh, without that partnership, Australia could have been bowled out for 400. So there was a big difference there. In the second innings, his innings was vitally important as well. Australia lost early wickets. The top order, yet again, didn't really fire. Smith and Head, the Centurions from the first innings, pretty much got out to poor shots. They played loose shots. Um, so it was up to Kerry to uh, get Australia back going again in the second innings to set India a very difficult target to chase down. And then he had good support from Mitchell Stark. 41 he made, Mitchell Stark, and he batted really well. The partnership they put on together was 93 for the seventh wicket, and that was pretty much the killer blow, blow for India, that partnership pretty much took the uh, momentum out of India's uh, bowling and pretty much asserted Australia's dominance in this World Test Championship final. So I thought Alex Carey, he was the third best Australian batter in this uh, Test match uh, from my point of view because um, he kept really well. His batting was good. He got out to uh, Ravinder Jadeja in the first innings. He played a reverse sweep. And then in the second innings, he, he played the conventional sweep, which he scored runs off, and that was a better option than the reverse sweep. So uh, two very good cameos from Kerry. That's his batting, but also his keeping was uh, top-notch. Um, Alex Kerry hasn't kept all that much in England in, in terms of test cricket. This is his first time playing test cricket in England, keeping wickets. Behind. Keeping wickets in England is a very tough gig. The ball deviates and swings after it's pitched off the pitch. So you've got to be on as a keeper, you've got to be sharp. And he was really sharp behind the stumps. He took a very good catch in the second innings where he jumped up, stuck out his one hand, his right hand, and he took that ball that came off the gloves of Umesh Yadav off Mitchell Stark in the second innings. That was a very good catch. And um, Alex Carey did well. So for Carey, this is a confidence booster going forward into the Ashes. Um, he, he did really well. With both bat and with both bat and with the gloves, as Australia's wicketkeeper. As I said, um, some other Australian batters will be disappointed about their performance in this uh, final. Uh, David Warner looked good in the first innings, got out to a poor shot in the second innings. He's under pressure to score runs. Uh, we all know about David Warner and all the pressure he's under. 
Usman Kawasha would be disappointed. Um, he got out in a similar way in both innings, caught behind, um, really not really moving his feet, uh, pretty much planted on the crease. Um, he's got a, a few questions to ask himself, uh, going forward into the ashes, of course. So he'll be bitterly disappointed about how he performed in this test match. Um, as we know with Kawaja over the last couple of years, he's been very good. He hasn't had a great record in England, but hopefully he can turn things around for the Ashes. But he'll be disappointed about his performance in this uh, in this test match. Manus Labashain, there was a lot of talk about him in terms of batting out of his crease. Um, a lot of people saying he should really bat in his crease because it, it, it does... Um, hamper him in some way um, he did struggle in the second innings India were bowling well to him the pitch was a bit up and down with the uneven bounce as we know um, and in the first innings he got a good ball from Shami that clean bowled him for 26 so, so Labashain will be disappointed about his performances and not really kicking on and getting a big score there uh, Cameron Green uh, you know, he's played IPL for the last couple of months. In the first innings, he went flashing at a ball outside off stump with hard hands. In the second innings, he got out to Jadeja. Pretty much went to defend a ball from Jadeja. Pretty much the ball bounced, hit his gloves, and went back onto the stumps, which wasn't a great dismissal from Green. But for Cameron Green, um, he will be um, disappointed with how he performed with the batting side of things. He did well with the ball. He took a wicket, and also he did well in the field, um, taking some very good catches. Um, but he'll be disappointed, and, and obviously going forward to the Ashes, he'll be hoping for more runs when that series starts in due course. Um, also, Australia's tail enders. Uh, still a little bit of concern there with Australia's tail enders. In the first innings, they didn't really make much of a contribution. Alex Carey did much of the run scoring, um, in the second innings, Mitchell Stark stood up and scored 41, which was good. Um, so it's, it's, it's vitally important for Australia's talenders going forward into the Ashes to score runs uh, because their runs are going to be very handy. As we saw in this test match, the partnership with Carey and Stark was crucial. Uh, they added 90-odd for the seventh wicket. Uh, and and Talender's runs are very important. If Mitchell Stark didn't score 41, didn't get a partnership with Carey, Australia's lead and the target they would have set India to chase in the last innings could have been a target of maybe 350 plus. And, you know, with even with that, it was still going to be difficult for India to chase down. But, you know, it didn't really bat India out of the match. Whereas a score of over 400 did. And that was the difference. So it's vitally important for the Australian talenders to really make sure they contribute and score those runs. Because as we saw in the second innings with Mitchell Stark, his partnership with Kerry, vitally important that talenders get together, score runs, and, and uh, every run counts. So that's something for Australia to, to work on going forward into the Ashes, of course. Uh, but overall, um, their batting performance wasn't a dominant batting performance, but... There was signs of rust, inconsistency, but for Australia, at times, they were able to do the basics well enough. Um, they were able to score runs and capitalise on poor deliveries that India bowled to them. And they were able to bat well, uh, get through that rustiness. They were able to do the basics well for periods of time, which put them in a good position to, to really boss this game in, in this test match. And that's what we saw. So... Uh, not a not a dominant batting performance, but they got the job done, and that's the main thing. Um, so let's talk about the bowling uh, performance. Let's talk about Australia's bowlers and how they performed in this World Test Championship final. Uh, so we'll start with uh, Cameron Green. Green took two wickets. Uh, Stark took four wickets. Uh, Cummins took four wickets. Uh, Lyon took five wickets. And Scott Boland took five wickets as well in the match. Um, so the Australian bowlers, it was a pretty patchy performance, you have to say. So let's talk about how they went about their business in both innings. Um, in the first innings, they bowled India out for 296, but it should have been a lot less. It was a bit of a mixed bowling performance. They had India 5 down for 151 at stumps on day 2. So you would say that they should have bowled India out for maybe 200 or something like that. But in reality, that's what didn't happen. 
Uh, they got their lines and lengths wrong. They were sloppy in the field. There were some drop catches. Also, Pat Cummins bowled some no balls, which cost him a couple of wickets. Um, so that didn't help. The partnership between uh, Rahani and Takor of 109 for the seventh wicket pretty much frustrated the Australians. It got India to that total of 296. Um, so Australia could have bowled them out for a lot less. And But the Australian bowlers, after that difficult first session on day three, uh, they regrouped after lunch. Uh, they went back to the basics and they bowled India out for 296, which gave them a good first innings lead of 173 runs. In the, in the second innings, the bowlers had a big target to defend. Uh, 444 for India to win. That's a big target for the Australian bowlers to defend. But you never know in cricket, funny things have happened. You, you've got to be on your game and you've got to bowl well. Unfortunately for Australia, they didn't start well. India got off to a good start. The runs were flowing off the bat of Rohit Sharma and Shubman Gill. The opening partnership put on 41, um, which um, got India off to a good start. Um, and the pitch was flattening out. The pitch was getting much easier for batting. It didn't show the tricks or the signs, as we saw, of uneven bounce or balls rearing off a length, as we saw in the, in the first few days of the test. It was starting to flatten out. The ball was getting soft. Um, so Australia were up against it early on. And um, people thought that India could have been a very good chance of chasing the runs down. But Australia were able to take three wickets going into day five. And uh, they had India three for 164 at stumps on day on day four. Um, heading into day five, it was going to be crucial for Australia to take early wickets and bowl really well, keep the runs down, put pressure on India... Um, and make sure they were patient and not searching for wickets, which often happens. Um, Australia would have been nervous with Kohli and Rahani at the crease, two very good players capable of batting for long periods of time. Um, and also for the Australian bowlers, they would have been thinking about what's happened in the past before, uh, what happened at the Gabba against India when they chased down 350-plus in 2020, 2021. Uh, what happened with Ben Stokes at Headingley in 2019. So those things will probably be in the mind of the Australian bowlers. But Australia were able to banish those demons of the past, and they were able to get the job done. And, and pretty much it started from Scott Boland's over. The over that he bowled, the setup to get rid of Vera Curley was exceptional, uh, top class from a very good bowler. He got rid of Curley, he got rid of Jadeja in the same over, and that pretty much changed the course of how day five was going to pan out. In the end, India had a batting collapse. They lost seven for 55 in the first session, were bowled out before lunch for 234. Game set and match, Australia win the test and win the World Test Championship. So that's how Australia went about their bowling performance across the two innings of this test. Um... Just like with the batting performance, it was a little bit rusty. Um, a lot of players were showing signs of rust. Pat Cummins was rusty. He bowled 10 no balls in this match. Two of them cost him wickets. So that's just an indication of him not having that rhythm, the, um, the, you know, the, the, the miles in the legs. Um, he hasn't played much test cricket over the last few months. Pat, as we know, he didn't play the last two tests in India. So... He was a little bit rusty going into this uh, WTC final. Mitchell Stark was leaking runs. He took four wickets for the match, which was good, but he conceded 70 runs in both innings. So that's a bit of a concern for Stark going forward into the Ashes. Um, he was a little bit rusty as well for Rhythm as well. Um, Nathan Lyon was good as always. He didn't bowl much in the first innings, but he got a wicket. But in the second innings um, where... Uh, people expected him to play a big role. He took four wickets, and he took the last wicket to, to help Australia win the World Test Championship. Um, and thoroughly deserved as well, Nathan Lyon. He's been one of Australia's best bowlers for many years, um, and he had a pretty good test match, um, Nathan Lyon. Uh, Scott Boland, what can you say about Scott Boland? Exceptional. Uh, you know, a very good bowler. He's, he's sort of like a bowling machine, Scott, where he can just land it on the spot every ball. And that's what he did. Um, his over to Curley, as I mentioned before, the over on day five to get get rid of Curley, get rid of Jadeja, pretty much helped Australia to win this uh, 
WTC final on day five. It could have gone either way. You know, if Curly and Rahani batted on until lunch, then it it was probably going going to be game on, really. But he was able to remove them, uh, cause a batting collapse, and uh, he's just quality, Scott Bowl, and he was exceptional. I think he was one of Australia's best bowlers in this test match uh, by far. Um, you know, he bowled really well and, you know, changed the game for Australia on day five, which he did. Um, Cameron Green was was good with the ball. He bowled some good deliveries. He got two wickets in the first innings. He, he got rid of Pajara in the first innings with a very good ball that just cut back from outside off stump and, and went back and Pajara went to leave it. But unfortunately, he got clean bowled. Um, he also took a couple of catches, good catches in the field, Cameron Green. Uh, that catch off Rahani at Gully with the one hand diving to his right was exceptional. And obviously we all know about the Shubman Gill catch, um, which was a one-handed catch from, from Green, but it was a little bit controversial as we know. I'm not going to go into much detail about that. That's already been discussed at length by so many people. And I think it's just a waste of time talking about it because already uh, the match is already done and the decision was already given. But it will create some controversy and some debate, which it has. But nonetheless, it was a very good effort. Um, so he had a pretty pretty good time of it with the ball. Um, Australia's fielding was poor at times. They dropped a few catches in that first innings. They dropped a few easy catches and some tough chances. But in the second innings, they pretty much were on song. The fielding was sharp. They caught everything. And that's very important, especially in the last innings of a test match where you need wickets to win. You've got to catch everything that comes your way. You've got to create those chances. And they took everything. You know, Steve Smith, what a catch off Scott Boland's bowling at second slip to get rid of Virat Curley. Uh, parallel with the ground. That's what uh, we're talking about, is taking those chances when they come. And Australia did that in the second innings. And that was a massive tick compared to the first innings where they dropped a few catches and it was a little bit sloppy there. Um, it Obviously, this bowling attack from Australia, very good bowling attack. There were more... Um, potent than the Indian bowling attack. India's bowlers looked a little bit innocuous. They weren't really threatening. The Australian bowlers were more threatening. They were asking more questions at times. And uh, that's why they got the 20 wickets in this test match because they're such a very good attack. Everyone provides a point of difference in terms of variation, in terms of the quality of bowler they are. Um, so it was a it was a patchy bowling performance by Australia, but nonetheless, the bowlers got the job done and they were able to take the 20 wickets, which you need to win a test match. They were able to do that and Australia went on to win this WTC final. So uh, a very inconsistent performance with the ball from Australia, but as I said, they got the job done. That's all that matters. And at the end of the day, Australia went on to win this WTC final. Now, let's talk about India. Let's talk about their performance in this test match. Um, very poor performance from India across the board with both bat and ball in this test match. But let's let's talk about their batting and bowling. First of all, let's talk about their batters and how they performed in this uh, World Test Championship final. Um, so, Rohit Sharma, 15 and 43. Gill, 13 and 18. Uh, Pajara, 14-27. Curley, 14-49. Uh, Rahani, 89 and 46. Jadeja, 48 and 0. And Bharat, 5 and 23. That's how the batters performed for India across this World Test Championship final, across the two innings. Um, so let's talk about their first innings and how they went about business there with the bat. Um, they faced an uphill battle. They conceded 469 runs, which is a big first innings total to concede. After winning the toss and bowling first, the top order collapsed. India reeling at 4 for 71 inside 18.2 overs. And that's never a good sign when the top order's collapsed and you're 4 for 70-odd. Um, very precarious position. Um, India were up against it. But Ajinka Rahani, the veteran, he came back into the Indian side after being dropped for the last uh, few months and years. Uh, came back into the side and, and batted well. He got 89. His innings, along with a couple of key partnerships of 71 for the fifth wicket with Ravinder Jadeja, 
and 109 for the seventh wicket with uh, Shadow Tucker, um, enabled India to reach 296 and get Australia's lead down to 173 runs to give them some hope of chasing some sort of reasonable target. So that's how they went about things in the first innings. The second innings, um, very difficult. They needed to chase down 444 runs to win, which would have been the highest ever successful run chase in Test cricket in the fourth innings. As we know, um, it's not easy chasing 400 runs in the last innings of a Test match. They were definitely up against it. But the opening partnership, Rohit Sharma and Shubman Gill got off to a good start. Runs were flowing. The run rate... Uh, was uh, was was pretty good for India at the start of their innings. Uh, Rohit Sharma, Shubman Gill added 41 for the first wicket. And just like in the first innings, the batters got in and then they got out. And um, India found themselves at 3 for 93 at one stage with 20.4 uh, 20, uh, 20. overs bowled and were facing a very difficult task of trying to even save the match, let alone chase down the 444 runs. Um... But um, they were able to um, get to stumps on day four with Rahani and Curley at the crease, two of their most senior players. Um, at three for 164 at stumps on day four, they gave India some hope of potentially chasing down the runs or trying to save the test match and share the trophy with Australia. Unfortunately, at the start of day five, it didn't pan out that way. All the anti-climax, all about, oh, you know, it's going to be a very close day or whatever. In reality, that's not what happened. It pretty much ended in the first session on day five at lunch. Before lunch on, on day five, India lost seven for 55 in a first session batting collapse. All out for 234. Scott Boland caused the batting collapse in that over that he bowled. He removed Kohli and Jadeja in the same over, and that was pretty much game, set, and match. And pretty much India's talenders didn't really offer much resistance. And as soon as Australia removed Kohli and Rahani, that was pretty much the game done. The wickets fell like dominoes after that, and India just collapsed and, and didn't really offer much resistance uh, with the bat to try and, you know, drag it out a, a little bit. And, and that's what didn't happen. Um, so India's batting overall in this test match, very poor, very poor performance, uh, poor shot selection, ill discipline from the batters. Um, the batters got in and, and got out. You know, you have a look in, in this test match, there were a few batters that got 40s. Rohit Sharma, second innings, 43. Curley, 49. Rahani, 46. And even in the first innings, uh, Jadeja, 48, didn't convert. Um, the top order collapsed in the first innings. You know, Rohit Sharma, 15. Gill, 13. Pajara, 14. Kohli, 14. Um, so that doesn't help. So they weren't at their best with the bat, India. Um, you know, I, I think Ajinka Rahani was probably India's best batter in this test match. He batted well in both innings. He showed the way for India. Um, and Shadow Tucker, who scored a half century, scored 51 in the first innings. Um back-to-back -back half centuries for him at the Oval in test matches because in 2021 he got a cent got a half century against England in that test match in that series. Um, so India's batting across the board was poor. They didn't do the basics well. Um, they, they couldn't win the key moments with the bat. They didn't build big partnerships. Now, in this innings, uh, sorry, this test match for India, they only had 350-run partnerships and they only had 100-run partnership. Um, they didn't have a big partnership like Australia did with Travis Head and Steve Smith for 285. Um, so that was a concern as well. Not getting in, not getting set, not building partnerships, not doing the basics well enough. And that's what happened with India there. Um, no resistance towards the end of the match, towards the end of their second innings. There was not much of a fight. Um, yes, when Curly and Rahani went, it did dent the morale and the spirit and you would think it's gonna it's gonna end in a in an Indian defeat, but at least you know the rest of their batters should have showed a bit more fight, a bit more resistance. Um, but they just sort of gave up and said, you know what, you know it's it's gonna end. We might as well just end it quickly, um, and just get it over and done with because we're we're not gonna draw the match, and and it's gonna be inevitable that Australia will eventually take the wickets and win this Test match. Uh, that's what it felt like. Um, so they'll be disappointed in that effort. Um, 
So yeah, their batting across the board was very poor. Um, not up to the standards that the Indian team set themselves. And um, yeah, they, they will be bitterly disappointed about their batting performance, India. They had an opportunity in the first innings to, to, to get close to Australia's first inning score. If they did that, then that would have put pressure a lot a lot of pressure on Australia um, in their second innings if if India reached some sort of parity or got close to it. But they weren't able to capitalise on that key moment. They just missed out on those cap, uh, capitalising on key moments. They didn't, they didn't cash in when they needed to. Um, and, and it was just very poor from, from their point of view. So very disappointed batting performance from India there. Let's talk about their bowling and, and how their bowlers went about things in this World Test Championship final. Uh, Jadeja took four wickets, two wickets for Takor, two wickets for Umesh Yadav, uh, four wickets for Shami, and five wickets for Siraj. That's how the Indian bowlers went about their business in this uh, World Test Championship final. Um, in the first innings, they won the toss and, and chose to field. Um, First, under grey overcast conditions at the Oval on day one. Uh, the pitch had a little bit of green grass on it. Um, very bowler-friendly conditions, as you would expect in England, um, under those conditions. They had Australia 2 for 71 at lunch on day one, and then 3 for 76 soon after lunch. But India's bowlers didn't utilise the bowler-friendly conditions. They didn't, they didn't make the most of the conditions and they didn't capitalise on that key moment. A common theme for India throughout this test match. Didn't capitalise on key moments when they needed to. Uh, Mohammed Shami, Mohammed Siraj bowled well up front. It was a good spell by both of them. They made the Australian batters look a little bit nervous on edge. Uh, the ball was swinging and, and seeming. Um, plays and misses. They created the pressure. But as soon as Shadur Takor and Umesh Yadav came in, all that pressure was gone. They released the pressure and they leaked runs and they didn't really back up the good work by uh, Shambi and Siraj up front. You know, Steve Smith, Travis Head added 285 for the fourth wicket. Australia were able to get that 469 score. That was pretty much game, set, and match from that position. Um, Australia had um, India, had Australia, I should say, at six for 387. Uh, with both Smith and Head out, uh, could have bowled Australia out for low 400s, but it wasn't to be. They leaked runs, um, they they took wickets. They were able to fight back in that first innings, but they weren't able to capitalise, and and they leaked runs India in that first innings when they were starting to try and get back into the match. Um, they took the wickets, but they were leaking runs at the same time, and pretty much uh, couldn't capitalise on that key moment in the second innings. They had an opportunity. The second innings, they had a bit of a chance to try and make something happen in this game. They restricted Australia to a lead of 173 runs. So that's a pretty good first innings lead from Australia. But an opportunity for India, if they made the most of their opportunities, if they bowled well, they could have bowled Australia out for a very low score and, and probably chased something, maybe 250, maybe 300 plus. Um, they had Australia 4 for 111 with Smith and Head out, but couldn't capitalise on that key moment again. And Australia finished on 8 for 270, declared setting India 444 runs to win. They leaked runs again. Um, Kerry and Stark's partnership of 93 for the 7th wicket pretty much took uh, the momentum out of the Indian bowling performance. And, and once that partnership got established, once the runs were scoring uh, freely off Australia's bat, the Indian bowlers pretty much gave up and said, yeah, you know, we're, we're not going to bowl them out here and we're just going for runs and and uh, we're, we're not building pressure here. So that's what happened across the two innings for India, across the first and second innings. And, and overall, it was a poor performance. They were leaking runs. They couldn't sustain pressure. They couldn't build pressure with the ball at times. They weren't as threatening as the Australian bowlers. They looked a little bit innocuous. Um... Obviously, the Ashwin debate, should he played, um, he should have been selected, a lot of people were saying, because Australia's left-handers, he would have caused problems. Um, so a bit of a selection blunder from the Indian uh, Brains Trust. 
that they could have um, they could have used Ashwin um, in this bowling performance because he would have asked many questions. But hindsight's a wonderful thing. But they went in with the four seamers and the one spinner in Jadasia, um, and that sort of didn't work really. It sort of backfired. Um, Muhammad Shami, Muhammad Siraj bowled well. Um, at times, they kept the pressure on Australia, especially in that first innings and also in the second innings at times. But as soon as Takor and Umesh Yadav came in, they just leaked runs. And you can't afford to do that. They bowled a boundary ball every, o- every over. And you can't afford to do that in Test Match Cricket. You've got to keep the pressure on from ball one in the over. And Takor and Yadav didn't, didn't really do that. They just leaked runs and, and Australia were, were not really threatened by their bowling. A sort of bowling that medium pace. It was, it was a lot easier for the Australian batters just to get in behind it and, and defend and, and score runs when they bowled a loose delivery outside off stump. And that's what happened. So, so India's bowling wasn't up to their standards. It was very poor very inconsistent, maybe a little bit of rust because obviously most of these bowlers have played in the IPL for the last two months, going into a test match. You know, it's it's a very different thing bowling in T20 cricket compared to test cricket. You've got to be more patient, more predictable, bowl a good line and length for long periods of time. And for the Indian bowling attack, they didn't do that. And that's why Australia were able to get the big first innings total of 469, which they did in the first innings. Um, and that pretty much sealed the match. You know, Smith and Head capitalised on the poor bowling from India. The partnership of 285, uh, they pretty much filled their boots in. And, and they scored runs at will. And, and India's tactics as well with the ball were all over the place. They didn't go to the short ball early enough with Travis Head. They went to it late in his innings. He was already 100 or something before they went to the short ball tactic. Um, but then they went to the short ball tactic early on in Travis Head's innings in the, in the second innings, which caused them a few problems. But they should have done that a lot earlier in the first innings. And then Travis Head wouldn't have got the score of 163 than he did. But it was too late. And, and they were just off the money. They were off the, off the boil um, and just not really on it with the ball in this test match, India. So they'll be very disappointed with how they perform not only with the ball, but also with the bat. It was very underwhelming. And, and and many of their supporters and fans will be disappointed by by how they performed in, in this test match. Um, and, and and obviously Australia were able to capitalise on key moments better than India did with both bat and ball. So India, very disappointed with their bowling performance. It wasn't their best. Um, so they'll be very disappointed about that. Right, so, to finish off our review of the World Test Championship final for 2023 between Australia and India, my final thoughts on how I saw the game and, and um, how, how both teams went about it. So my final thoughts um, before we sign off on this episode today. Um, Australia, by far the best team in the World Test Championship cycle over the two years. They deserve their victory. Uh, they played some good cricket. They had they had a lot of challenges on and off the field. Uh, Pat Cummins came in as a new captain after Tim Payne re- uh, resigned from the captaincy. The whole Justin Langer situation as coach. So they they were presented with a lot of challenges. This Australian team, but they rallied around each other. They played some good cricket, and you know they they outplayed India in this final. You know and. And they deserve their their victory. They're by far the, the better team in the final. Um, over the two years, they, they've been performing very well. And the hard work and the determination has paid off. And, and for Australia, um, you know, a very good team performance. And, and that's what it was for Australia in this final. It was a good team performance. All of the teams stood up when required. Um... Smith and Head with the bat, Carey as well with the gloves and with the bat, uh, with the ball. It was Scott Boland who stood up rather than Cummins and Stark. Nathan Lyon stood up. Cameron Green took some good catches um, and stood up with the ball as well, taking a, a wicket or two. Um, so it was a very good team effort from Australia. And um, and that's very important in the game of cricket, that the team 
is the important thing. Not the individual, but the team. How the team come together. How they rally around each other uh, to produce these performances. And and for Australia in this final, it was a team performance. They weren't at their best. They were rusty. It wasn't a dominant performance, but they did enough to get the job done. And that's all that matters. So they finally deserve their uh, victory in this WTC final. On the other hand, with India, they'll be very disappointed. It was a very poor performance. But making back-to-back -back WTC finals is a good effort from India. So it'll be interesting to see what India do over the next two years. Where do they go to now? Is it a new strategy? Do we bring in younger players? Do we uh, revamp the test team? So it'll be interesting to see what they do in the next two years, India. But um, they'll be very disappointed that they didn't really perform at their best in this final. And uh, that sort of reflected in the way they batted and bowled in this final. And probably the margin of victory as well. 209 runs they lost by. Sort of reflects um, how poorly they played in this, um, in this test match. Also in the final, we saw some good performances with both bat and ball. In the field, we saw some very good catches at times. And it was a very good final. We saw some good moments. Um, it was very competitive. Um, Australia were well on top. India fought back, um, as they always do from adversity. Um, it was just a, a very good game of cricket. And in the end, Australia too strong for India and uh, deserved to win their first WTC final. Obviously, this final marks the end of the current cycle. But the new WTC cycle will start uh, when the Ashes begin this week between England and Australia. That will start the new cycle for the next two years. And uh, it's sure to be a very exciting two years uh, for the next WTC cycle to see which two teams will finish on top and come back and play in the final of the next WTC, which will be at Lords in two years' time. Um, so if you're listening to this episode of the podcast on our YouTube channel, do let us know your thoughts on this WTC final in the comments section. We would love to hear what you have to say about the final and your thoughts and observations about that. Alrighty then, thanks everyone for listening um, to our ICC World Test Championship review for 2023 between Australia and India. Before we go, a reminder of our Ashes coverage. We're going to be covering the men's and women's Ashes. Be sure to subscribe and click the bell on our YouTube channel so you don't miss out on those episodes of um, our Ashes coverage because the next few months and weeks I'm going to be very busy with the men's and women's Ashes. And here on the Dibbly Dobbly podcast, you can uh, catch everything there is to know about the men's and women's Ashes. So make sure you subscribe to the channel on our YouTube channel to um, make sure that you don't miss out. But once again, everyone, thanks for listening. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.